There's a lot to like about the Jumper T Pro, but it's got two major flaws in its design that mean it's not as useful as it could be. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to fix those problems. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. The first problem that we're gonna fix with the Jumper T Pro is the shoulder switch. The shoulder switches are momentary switches, and that means that there isn't any two position switch on the radio for arming. Arming, disarming, two position switches, kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Now, in my original review of this radio, I showed a method to turn one of these shoulder switches into a toggle, so each press would arm and then disarm. But in this video, I'm gonna show you some ways to improve on that relatively simple and some would argue unsafe setup. The other problem that we're gonna fix in this radio is these six position switches. Now, in a minute, I'm gonna show you how to make this six position switch act like the six position switch on other radios. There's actually a new function in the Jumper T Pro that I didn't know about when I reviewed the radio, and you're not gonna wanna miss it. So if we press the menu key and then the page key to go to model setup, there's a new menu here that I've never seen in OpenTX before, and it's here, the function switches menu. And this is one way to address one of my big complaints about the six position switches on this radio, which was that they were exclusive to each other. That if you enabled number one, and then you enabled number three, number one turned off. They weren't actually six individual independent two position switches. We can fix that right here. And the way we fix that is to go and change this last number here. This number here groups the switches into exclusivity groups, where only one switch in that group will be allowed to be on at a time. So right now they are all in group number one, which means that only one of them can be on at a time. I could take and I could put uh, the first two of them into group number two. And that means that switches one and two would be exclusive with each other. Only one of those could be on at a time or they could, or they could be off. And then switches three, four, five, six are in a separate group where only one of them can be on at a time. Or what I could do is this. I could just change it so it's a dash. And that means the exclusivity is disabled. And now you can say I've disabled the exclusivity for all of them. Check this out. I can enable number one. I can enable number two, three, four, five, six. I can disable them. They are all independent two position switches. So that is one way that we can modify the behavior of these switches. I also want to acknowledge that we have the option in this menu to change the switches from two pause to toggle. And I, I have played with this for about 45 minutes and also uh, It's Blunty has one of these radios and he has played with it and we can't figure out what toggle does. But later I did figure out why it doesn't work, and the reason it doesn't work is that it's broken. Yeah, it's just bugged. Um, but the way it's supposed to work is that setting the switch to toggle turns it into a momentary switch. And that's pretty cool because this radio has two momentary switches, which, spoiler alert, we're gonna use for arming in this video, at which point you'll have no more momentary switches. So like, how are you gonna use a buzzer or, yeah. So uh, setting the switch to toggle makes it a momentary switch, and in a future version of OpenTX or EdgeTX, that will be fixed, but for now, only number one works. The others don't. I guess that's one momentary switch. One last thing as long as we're here, just don't wanna miss this. You can also, right down here, change the default switch position for all six of these switches, whether it's on or off. In the same way that you would like flip one of these three position switches and leave it in a certain position so your quad had some mode active or disactive, deactive when you first power it up. Next, you're gonna learn how to make that six position switch act like the six position switch on all the other radios with six position switches. <sighs> I'll just be down here if you need me. In order to fix this, I'm gonna short press the menu key to go to the model select screen, and then I'm gonna to page to the mixer screen, and that is where we control what is output on each of the channels of the radio rel relative to the input switch positions and so forth. And I'm gonna scroll down, and I'm just gonna pick one of my unused aux channels, five, six, seven, eight, any of those will do. I'm gonna click the jog wheel to create a new mix, and the source, for that, I'm gonna scroll down and highlight source, click the jog wheel one time. Now source is blinking and I'm gonna press 
that first switch. Now when I did that, it picks up the switch that just turned off. I wanted to read switch one, not switch four. So I'm gonna press that again and now it will pick up switch one as the source for this mix. Now if I press the return key to back out of the menu, I just wanna show you what that actually does to the channel. So here on the main screen, I'm just gonna press the page key to get to the channels monitor and you can see what happens when I click this switch. Notice that when I click this switch, channel five goes from negative 100 to positive 100. It goes from all the way down to all the way up. Well, that's not quite what we want. Because what I wanna do is have each of these switches cause the channel to go to a different unique position. So switch one causes it to go to, let's say all the way down. Switch two causes it to go to like a little bit further up. Switch three causes it to go to a little bit further up from that and so on. So here's how we're gonna do that. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a default channel position for when none of the buttons are pressed. And that makes sense that that would be like minus 100% all the way down. We'll click the menu key one time and then page to the mixes screen. We'll scroll down to channel five where we've got that switch one mix we created. We will long press the jog wheel and we will choose insert before. And that's gonna add a new mixer line before the current one. What I want you to do is change the source for that to max. So you're just gonna need to click and scroll until you find max. And max means that the channel is going to go to a fixed position that we're gonna predetermine. Uh, and the fixed position is going to be set by the weight and the weight is going to be minus 100. For switch one, we're gonna long press and edit. And what we're gonna do is again, we're gonna change the source to max. Here we're gonna set the weight to, let's think about it, we've got seven positions of the channel. We've got six switches, each of which can be true, can be on, and then one position for when none of the switches are on. So it's seven total states the channel can be in, and the channel can go from minus 100 to positive 100, so that's a total range of 200 divided by seven, which means we have about 28 steps uh, total. Let's call it 30, that's fine. Um, so what I'm gonna do for this first switch is it is gonna have a value of minus 70. So now what we've got is two lines in the mixer, one of which is causing the channel to go to minus 100 and one of which is causing the channel to go to minus 70. How do they interact? They interact in this case, you can see this line is labeled plus equals. It means they're adding up. And it actually means that the channel position is logically speaking at a value of minus 100, minus 70 or minus 170. It's way off the end of the scale. That's not actually what we want. We really want only one of these lines to be active at a time. And here's how we're gonna accomplish that. We're gonna go down to that second line which says minus 70 max. We're gonna long click and edit. We're gonna go down to where it says switch. And this allows us to cause this line to become active only when a certain switch is enabled. And we're gonna click that and we're gonna press the first of the uh, six position switches. And notice that when it is lit up, it says switch one down. And when it is off, it says switch one minus. So we wanna have that lit up and it says switch one down. And I'm gonna just click the jog wheel one time. And then the second thing we need to do is we need to change the multiplex setting from add to replace. So now that minus 70 line is going to only be active when this button is lit up and it is going to replace everything that came before it. It's not gonna add to it, it's gonna replace it. So now let's go back out to the main screen and let's take a look at what this is gonna do. Notice that that channel is at a value of minus 70 and then if I turn the switch off, it goes to minus 100. Minus 70, minus 100. Now we're gonna keep doing that for all of the remaining switches. We're gonna use, yeah, we're gonna use a weight of minus 70, minus 40, minus 10, 20. You see we're adding 30 each time. Everything else is gonna be the same. It's gonna multiplex replace and we're gonna choose each of the switches. I'm gonna go down here to where it says minus 70 max, a switch one. I'm gonna long click and insert after. We've added a new mixer line. The source is gonna be max. I really wish there was an easier way to get to max, but I don't think there is. There it is, max. The weight for this one is gonna be minus 70. Then we're gonna add 30, so it's gonna be minus 40. Our switch condition is gonna be switch two lit up, and our multiplex is gonna be replace. 
Oops, I made a mistake there. Do you see that I have 40 in there as my weight, not minus 40? That's a mistake. Let me fix that. There we go. I want minus 40. And now I'm going to do that for all the remaining switches, and I'll catch right back up with you. By the way, there is a shortcut you can use that might speed this up a little for you. If you just long click one line and choose copy, and then scroll down one click, it'll just make a copy of the previous line. So at the end, here's what your screen should look like. The very first line is a minus 100 max. And that's just the default situation that the channel is going to be in when none of the switches are activated. And then we've got each of the switches. Notice that there is colon equals instead of plus equals, indicating that this will replace instead of adding. We've got the weights going minus 100, minus 70, minus 40, minus 10, 20, 50, 80, a difference of 30 in each, and the switches 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 here. And if we back all the way out, we can see the channel is off, it's at minus 100, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and off. There you go. You now have basically a 7 position rotary switch. It does seem to work as expected. I guess the only sort of vaguely weird behavior is that if you click the, second, the, the same switch twice, if it was truly a rotary switch, it would stay on the previous value instead of reverting back to the default value. But I still think this is more useful than the way they shipped it, and I'm very happy that I could hopefully make this radio a little more useful for you. If I did make the radio more useful for you, or if I taught you something you didn't know about OpenTX, would you go down, do me a favor, go down there and hit the like button. It really helps make sure that more people see this video. And if you thought it was useful, other people probably think it's useful too and will probably appreciate you doing that. I certainly will appreciate you doing that. Thank you so much. Next, we got to deal with these pesky shoulder switches. And in my original review of this radio, I showed how you could use one of these shoulder switches to arm and disarm your quad just by pressing the switch. And the problem with that is it's too easy to accidentally press. You could either accidentally arm it and hurt yourself, or you could be flying and you could accidentally press it and disarm and quad falls out of the sky and maybe you lose it. So the safer way to do it is to require a double button press. And I got to acknowledge, Albert Kim has done a tutorial about how to do this. And when I saw while he had a tutorial about how to do it, I intentionally didn't watch it because I wanted to figure out my own way of doing it. And if it's the same as the way Albert did it, then I want you to let me know down in the comments. Or if it's different than the way Albert did it and he did it better, I want you to let me know in the comments. I'm going to be watching the comments and we'll see if great minds think alike or if he's smarter than me. Or maybe I'm smarter than him. So here's how I would go about it. I'm going to short press the menu key to get to the model setup and then I'm going to page and this is going to involve what's called logical switches. Oops, I overshot. Uh, if you overshoot a page, just long press the page button to go back by one. If you watched the full review of that video, you are, of this radio, you already knew that. And in this case, I'm gonna ask you to just follow along with me because this is a little more in depth uh, and maybe I'll do another video about logical switches in OpenTX, if that's something you're interested in. So I'm just going to highlight L01 here. It doesn't matter which one you highlight. It's just that's the first unused one. I'm going to click the jog wheel one time to create a new logical switch function. The function, I'm going to click and I'm going to roll the jog wheel to select AND as the function. And then I'm going to highlight V1 and I'm going to click so it's blinking. And I'm going to click the left momentary switch one time and it'll fill in SC down. And then I'm going to go down to where it says and switch. I'm going to click the jog wheel and I'm going to click the right momentary button so it says SD down. And what we've done here, you'll notice if I hold down the left switch, it shows V1 because the switch SC down becomes bold, indicating that condition is true. And if I hold down the right switch, switch SD down becomes true. And when I hold both of them down, switch L01 becomes true. Logical switch one is going to become true when both of those switches are pressed at the same time. I'm going to then back out once and back out once again. And then I'm going to go down to L02. And this one, you really are going to just have to follow along with me because it's going to involve a thing called sticky switches. And sticky switches are even more complicated to explain. But we're going to select function sticky. And V1 is going to be L01. Can I long press? Yes, if I long press the jog wheel, I can select logical switches and it's going to bring L01 right up. That's very easy. And then for V2, I'm going to click once so it's blinking. I'm going to long press. I'm going to go down to logical switches and that will take us right to L01 just like that.
And what that's going to do, the way a sticky switch works is each time it act, there's, there's one condition that activates it and one condition that deactivates it. In this case, that's the same thing. It's switch LO1. And then if we just return out to the logical switches screen, you'll see is that if I hold both of these switches at the same time, switch LO2 is going to alternate between on and off. So holding either holding those both those switches down in any order is going to flip that switch. The last thing we need to do then is go back and set that up actually as an aux mode that will cause our quad to arm and disarm. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to page to the mixes screen and I'm going to need to just pick an aux channel to control my arming and disarming. And well, I've already used channel five for these six positions, so we'll just go ahead and use channel six. It doesn't really matter. Hey there, guys. Joshua from the future here, hanging out with my doggo. He doesn't like being on camera, so I'll make this quick. If you're using Express LRS, you have to use channel five as your arming channel, and high position has to be armed and low position disarm. Oh, <gasps> boy. I'll click the jog wheel one time. I'll choose the source for this mix. I'll click one time so it's blinking, and then I will long press and go down to logical switches, you son of a beast. What? Oh, of course logical switches aren't there. There, well, anyway. I'm gonna roll the jog wheel until I find LO, uh, LO2, which is the logical switch that will now control this channel. So if I back all the way back out to the main screen and page to the channel monitor, what you'll see is that channel six is all the way down. And if I click both the shoulder switches, it becomes all the way up. And then in your quadcopter, in your flight controller, you can have channel six control the arming mode. I'm not gonna show you how to do that. That'll be, it's a different, it depends on your flight control. You know, I think we've really turned this into a pretty good radio. Those were my two major complaints with this radio and we just fixed them. Thanks to the power of OpenTX. I wanna remind you that I will also be reviewing the iFlight Commando and the Radio Master Zorro just as soon as I get them. And that's yet another reason why you definitely wanna hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you see them as soon as they come out. Thank you so much for watching. Happy flying. What are you doing in here? The least you could do is subscribe or join my Patreon or like just here's another video I picked out for you. Jeez.